We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. John Jackson is in center field. He'll bat seven. Over at third base is Dominic Bethencourt. He'll hit eighth, and then rounding out the lineup, Nico Tony, he will bat ninth and do the catching. And the starting pitcher for Napa tonight is Sean Johnson. And we'll talk a little bit about him a little later on. But Henry o o Omania tonight, 6'4", 210 pound right hander. This is his fifth start. Two and one with a 1.80 ERA in 20 innings this year. Five runs, just four earned on 17 hits. 27 strikeouts and four walks only in 20 innings for the right-hander out of Southern California. Last start was against Vallejo, in which he earned the loss, but pitched well in that game. The Stompers lost that ball game 4-1, to one, but Omani only allowed two earned runs, three total in five innings of work while striking out four. Willie really, Salas will lead us off here. Against Henry Omanya, the right-hander from Diamond Bar. Two starts. This is his third against Napa this year, his fifth overall. Kern is in on the grass at third base to open the ball game. Omanya out of the windup, and his first pitch is chopped foul across. Into foul territory on the third base side. We're underway. First pitch, 607 and 78 degrees here tonight. They were officially underway in the month of July. Stompers 16 and 5 overall. All the games were in June as Salas takes inside for ball one. So out of Henry Omania, the right hander, you'll see a fastball curveball and a changeup. Fastball high 80s, low 90s, 88 to 92 for him. He works out of the windup with nobody on base. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Salas fouls it off. One ball and two strikes the count on the leadoff man and the shortstop for Napa. Little bit of wind tonight. It's blowing to straightaway center where DeAndre Hubbard shifts slightly over toward right center field. Here's the one-two from Amania. Curve ball reached out and punched into short center. On the run is Hubbard. He'll settle down and make the catch, and that's how we get underway. Defensively behind Omania tonight, it's DeAngelis in left, Hubbard in center. Williams in right, Nick Kern at third base, Barrios at shortstop, Nick Gata at second base, and Chris Butcher over at first, and Bronson Butcher does the catching behind the plate. For Henry Omanya in his fifth start and his third against the Silverado, so he's familiar with this lineup as Dakota Connors now stands in, right-handed hitting second baseman. First pitch from Omanya is in for a strike. Nothing and one to count on Connors hitting 321. It's all he's done since coming to Napa, just get on base, and he's a base hit machine. 
Not much power, no home runs. He has driven in seven as he's behind the Omanya fastball, and it's 0-2. Just underway here tonight. San Rafael and Salina starting very shortly. Omanio and Owen Suda Connor say he rolls it to third and wide to the third base bag. So the count remains 0 2. Gary Reichel Meyer calls balls and strikes tonight with Gary Freezers in the field. Your Pacific Association umpire and crew in tonight's ball game. Omanya finds himself way ahead of Connors. Owen Sue's just the second hitter of the game after getting Salas to fly to center. Omanya and Owen Sue out of the windup. On the outside corner, but called ball one. Good spot out of Henry Omanya, the right hander, and goes to the outside corner, and Butcher stuck it there. Did not get the strike call, but here he comes on one and two to Connor. The pitch. Back straight back. Against the Silverados this year, Stompers are five and one. The only loss came on the road in Napa, the worst loss of the year. The 19 to 1 was the final of that ball game. Only one game against the Silverados here. The one-two pitch from Omani is a slow curveball out off the outside corner. Stompers have been very good here at home, a record of 10 and 2 at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. The San Rafael win on Sunday, they doubled the road record. Now six and three on the road. Connors pops it up. Right side of the infield. Chris Butcher with the glasses on battling the sun makes the catch for out number two. Stompers who come into this game have won four straight. Napa has dropped two in a row. Here's Jordan Gar, the right fielder. Stompers last loss came against Napa, excuse me, against Vallejo last week. Early on in the week on Tuesday. Here's Almanya's first pitch to Jordan Gar. He tanks off the outside corner with a fastball for ball one. Omani, who spent some time in the Mexican League last year, threw 14 innings there, spent some time at Cal State Fullerton 2013-2015, and then at Cal Poly Pomona in 2017. Here's his 1-0 to Jordan Gar. It's outside and low again with a fastball. Two balls and no strikes to count. 47 strikeouts for Omani in 20 innings. Against Napa this year in two starts, he's 1-0. A 10-3 game that the Stompers won, and then a 9-4 ball game. Well, he got a no decision. Here's his 2-0. It's off the outside corner, three balls and no strikes. Omani has fallen behind Jordan Gar here, the 3 0 pitch. At the knees, but low. Four pitch walk to Jordan Carr. That's the first base runner allowed in the ball game by Henry Omani. So a runner at first, two out for the cleanup man, Jacob Bissell. Bissell hitting at 298 with three home runs and 13 runs batted in. Left-handed hitter against the righty Omanya. He looks to first, now set at the chest. First pitch to Bissell, a swing and a miss. Fastball in the inner half. Threw it right by the barrel of Bissell. The count is 0-1 with Hubbard shading for Bissell to pull in center field. Same with turnover at third well off the line. Here's the 0-1, there goes Gar, the pitch is low. The throw down to second in plenty of time, and they got him. What a throw by Bronson Butcher behind the plate to catch Jordan Gar trying to steal second base, and that's a 1-2-3 top half of the inning for Omanya as they erase Gar on the caught stealing. Nick Gata, Miles Williams, Rob DeAngelis, and the rest of the Stomper lineup when we come back right here on KSBY and at StompersBaseball.com. 
We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Bottom of the first inning, no score. And here's the starting lineup for the Stompers as announced by manager Zach Pace. Nick Otto will lead things off at second. Miles Williams in right field will bat second. Rob DeAngelis will bat third in left field. The center fielder, Dondre Hubbard, is the cleanup man tonight with Chris Quitzer over at first batting fifth. Pedro Barrios will hit sixth at shortstop, followed by the designated hitter, Brent Gillespie, in the seventh spot. Bronson Butcher will catch and bat eighth. And Nick Kearns over at third, and he'll bat ninth. Against John Johnson, the six foot four right hander. This is his fifth start of the year, his fifth game of the year, that is. Only his third start. He's got to take the strike on the outside corner. Johnson, one and two with a 7 5 3 ERA. 14 and a third innings, 14 runs against him, 12 earned. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Gata. He fists it into foul territory on the left side, long run. Bethencourt, he won't get there. It drops in foul ground and so in two. Johnson's allowed 21 hits. He struck out 11 and walked eight in 14 and a third. So he'll face the leadoff man, Nick Gata, hitting 318. Second in the league and on base percentage at 526. Here's the 0-2 from Johnson to Gata. From the side with a breaking ball, and it's one and two. Gata, who leads the league in. Walks with 26 today, game number 22. The one-two pitch from Johnson. Check swing. He did not go around, and the fastball missed off the outside. Got a 3.18 average. He's driven in eight. I mean, he'll lead off this bottom of the first. Johnson out of the windup to pitch. Got to take low. The count is full. You'll see that. Very often out of Nick Gatto, two to full. Very good plate discipline, very good eye. Part of the reason why he does lead the league in walks, and he has his, the on-base percentage of 526. Here's the payoff from Johnson to Gatto. Curveball taken inside and a leadoff walk for Nick Gatto. That's his league leading 27th walk. Here's Miles Williams, who homered in the last game the Stompers played on Sunday afternoon in San Rafael. He has not homered at home yet. Twice in Napa, once in San Rafael for three home runs. He's batting 280. First pitch from Johnson. He swings at a fastball down below the knees for strike one. Stompers who lead the league in nearly every offensive category. 281 is a team batting average, 394 on base for the Stompers this year. Johnson's 0-1 pitch. Miles takes a curveball high, 1-1. One one. Lead the league in slugging percentage, OPS. Strikeouts on the offensive side, runs batted in, and home runs. 
Here's the 1-1 one, one. inside to Williams. Two balls and a strike to count. The only category they're last in is stolen bases. Salina leads that category with 57, and Napa right behind with 54. Here's Johnson's 2-1 to Williams. Another breaking ball. This one catches the outside corner for strike two. Two balls and two strikes to counter. Miles Williams got his over at first. Nobody out. We're in the bottom of the first inning. No score. Johnson set at the chest. He looks to first now the 2-2, and Williams is down swinging. Curveball up in the strike zone. Williams could not get all the way up to it, and he's down on strikes for the first down of the ball game. Here's Rob DeAngelis, a 329 average for him as he was the hitter of the month in June for the Stompers. Batting down at 150, and then he's reached in his last 17, and he's hit in 16 of the 19 games that he's played in this year, earning him the batter of the month in June, and he tops one foul down the third baseline for strike one against Johnson's first pitch. But DeAngelis, who has caught fire late in June and now trying to carry that over into the month of July. Scott is at first base with one out, the strikeout to Williams. Scott, who has stolen four bases this year, DeAngelis takes a breaking ball in the dirt inside, and Tony does a nice job to block it for ball one. Zach Bates, who does not like to steal all that often, especially not in the first inning. He says all the pressure is on the pitcher in the first inning, especially when you get a guy on base just to get out of that inning. So the 1-1 one, one from Johnson to DeAngelis on the ground, right back to Johnson on the hill. He throws to Salas at second. It's into center field. That'll be an error on Sean Johnson. So the E-1 and the Stompers have first and second with one out for DeAndre Hubbard. Hubbard third in the league with a 353 average, second in home runs with seven, and also second in RBIs with 26, only behind San Rafael's Axel Johnson. Hubbard at the plate with got at second, D'Angelo's at first. Hubbard this year, 359, four home runs, 42 RBIs with runners in scoring position. He has an opportunity to get the stompers on the board first. Johnson's first pitch, and Hubbard swings right through it. Card got a good fastball from the right-hander, and the count is 0-1. Scott is at second with good speed. Same with DeAngelis over at first. Johnson's 0-1 pitch. Third ball high and away. One ball and one strike. Hubbard stands in right side. Johnson set at the chest. He looks to second twice. Now throws on one and one. Hubbard behind the fastball again. It's one and two. Still no score, bottom of the first. Stompers trying to get on the board first. Johnson, the 6'4 right-hander, deals on one and two. Hubbard rolls it foul down the third baseline to stay alive. Andre Hubbard, who was on fire the first week of the season, hit three home runs in his first three games, and then in the middle of June, hit two home runs in the same ball game. He had seven. Stompers have two on and one out, the one two. Line drive in the air, left center field. That's it. Well, back goes Jackson. It is gone. See you later. Dondre Hubbard's eighth home run of the year, a three-run blast to left center, and the Stompers are on the board. First, it's 3-0. Dondre
Dondre Hubbard's eighth home run of the year brought to you by Epicenter. Make your next family adventure an epic one at Epicenter. It's a 3-0 game after the Hubbard three-run blast to left center. Here's Chris Quitzer. Here's Quitzer with nobody on and one out. The first pitch from Dante is on the outside corner for strike one. So the only out, the Williams home run. Oh, one one pitch swung on a miss here, and it's nothing in two. Quitzer fouls off. The 0-2 pitch at the play. No balls and two strikes still on Chris Quitzer. The Hubbard three-run blast to left center field. Makes it a 3 nothing stomper lead here in the first. The 0-2 from Johnson again, and Quitzer is down on strikes. He found it into the glove of Nico Tony. So both outs here in the first inning by way of the strikeout for Sean Johnson. Here's Pedro Barrios. Starting shortstop for the Stompers tonight. Barrios 262. First pitch to him on the ground, left side. Bethencourt at third field. So he'll throw across. That ends the inning. But the Stompers get on the board first. Three runs on one hit. The Dondre Hubbard three-run blast to left center, and just like that, after one, the Stompers lead it 3-0. Little third of the order, J.J. Bissell will lead it off when we come back right here at KSVY and on the Stompers Radio Network. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Jacob Bissell will lead us off in the top of the second inning. He was at the plate when Jordan Gar was thrown out at second base trying to steal to end the top of the first inning. The Dondre Hubbard three-run blast to left center field put the stoppers on the board first. So it's a 3-0 game in the second. Almanya's first pitch to Bissell, a high fastball swung on and missed. Owen won the count on Bissell again, 298 this year, three home runs. The left handed batter awaits the 0 1 from Omania. Here it is. Fastball high and away, one ball and one strike. Fastball curveball change about of Omania and the Stompers who lead the Pacific Association by four and a half games over San Rafael. Vallejo is fourth in the league. 
at 9 and 13. Here's the 1 1 to Bissell. That is a changeup from Oman, and it misses outside. Two balls in the strike. Middle third of the order for Napa here in the second. Trailing by three. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Fastball in the outside corner at 86 miles an hour. The count is 2 and 2. Romagna downhill on two and two to Bissell. Change up outside and the count is full. Only the second three ball count for Romagna in the first two innings. Romagna steps off, manicures the mound right in front of the rubber. Now back into his motion. Here's the payoff pitch. That's a called strike three at 89. A fastball belt high, and Omanya has his first strike out of the ball game. He gets Bissell looking with a tailing fastball, and here's Nick Olch. 282 for Olch, three home runs, 15 runs batted in. Another lefty in this. Silverado lineup, and here's Omanya's first pitch to him. Breaking ball, a good one at 77, the curveball. Old swings over the top of it, and the count is 0 1. Old digs back in a slightly open stance. Here's Omanya's nothing in one pitch. Pass ball off the inner half for ball one. One ball and one strike. Hubbard still over toward that right center gap, expecting Olch to pull. And same with DeAngelis in left. He's well off the line, 90 feet off the line or so. Here's the 1-1 one, one from Amanya. Swung on and missed. Yeah. Fastball down in the zone, and it's 1-2. and two. Yeah. Amanya, who got Bissell looking to start the inning, now throws on 1-2 and two to Olch. That's lined right into, into the glove of Chris Quitzer over at first base, a soft liner. He makes quick work of it, and just like that, there's two away. Here's the DH, Malvin Nunez. We see him at second base a lot in now, but tonight he gets a night off defensively, but still in the lineup for Tito. Nunez switch hitter from the left side. The first pitch from Amanya is inside and low. Breaking ball misses for ball one. It's Napa night tonight. Then we're on the road tomorrow night in Vallejo. 635 first pitch in that one. Amanya's 1-0. Way outside. Then, of course, 4th of July on Thursday. And if you haven't purchased your tickets yet, make sure you go to stoppersbaseball.com and do it now. Seating is limited. And remaining tickets are limited. That's Thursday night, 6.05. The Salina Stockade are here. Mamania on 2-0. And, and Nunez chases the fastball high and rolls it down the first baseline foul. Uh, then on Friday, we're on the road again in San Rafael at 6.30. That game will be on the Stompers Radio Network, same as tomorrow night. And then back home on Saturday against the Stockade once again at 6.05. Here's Omanya's 2 1. It's inside, three balls and a strike. Third three ball count already for Omanya in this game. And we're an inning in the third into it. Omanya works out of the wind up on three and one. Here it is to Nunez. That is on the outside corner. Good spot for Omanya to go away from Nunez on three and one, and now the count is full. Sean Jackson on deck with the lefty Nunez at the plate. Nobody on two out. Here's the payoff pitch from Henry Omanya. That's outside in his second walk of the ball game for Omanya. Both two out walks, and he was lucky enough that Jordan Gar was caught stealing the first time after he walked. Now the right hander will face Sean Jackson, the center fielder. Jackson stands in left side. 
Omanya back out of the stretch. Here's his first pitch. And Jackson swings and misses at a good fastball. And it's 0-1. Balvin Nunez at first. He'll take off at a moment's notice. Only one stolen base on the year, but he does possess good speed. Turning the throw over to first, not in time. Owen won the count on Jackson, who's hitting 217. Seems like he has a multi hit game every time he faces the Stompers Club this year. Spinning another throw over, not in time. Nunez back standing up. So just two base runners allowed for Omanya, both walks. Gar walked with two out in the first inning, then was caught stealing. Here's his 0-1 pitch to Sean Jackson. That's inside and a delayed steal by Malvin Nunez. No throw from Bronson Butcher as the pitch missed high and inside. Count is 1-2, and two, and now Napper with a runner in scoring position. Stoppers lead at 3-0 in the top of the second. Nobody really paying attention to Nunez there. They saw the secondary lead. Now he's headed for third. Omanya steps off with Kern way off. He fires to Kern, who pumps once. Now gives the ball to Barrios, who runs down Nunez. Your casual 1-5-6 put out. Nunez getting a little greedy on the bases, and he's erased to end the inning. So for the second inning in a row, a two-out walk, and the runners erase trying to steal the base. The bottom third of the order. Go SB Butcher Kern for the Stompers when we return. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Ben Gillespie leads us off in the bottom of the second inning. The Stompers lead this one 3-0 on the Dondre Hubbard three-run shot, and Gillespie takes inside for ball one. Brent Gillespie, the designated hitter, hasn't started in the field yet this year. Here's the 1-0 pitch to him from Sean Johnson. He fists it in the air to center, and it will fall for a base hit. He broke his bat, but it died a hero, as they say. So Gillespie's the second stomper hit of the ball game. That'll bring up Bronson Butch and for Gillespie, who's hitting 300 on the year in just a week's worth of games. When you're hitting that well, those hits just fall for you. Here's Bronson Butcher, the catcher. 255 for him. Been hitting the ball harder as of late. The average hasn't come around. But the ball just sounds better off the bat of Bronson Butcher in the last week or so. Johnson back out of the stretch. His first pitch to Butcher is way inside. It almost got him as he hops out of the way. One ball and no strike. So six up, six down against Omanya, though the unconventional way. Pair of walks and both runners caught trying to steal the base. Johnson's 1-0 to Butcher. 
On the ground to short. Salas is there. He'll field go to second for one. Back half to first in time. 6-4-3 double play. Salas, Connors, Bissell. That wipes the Gillespie single off the scorecard. And so nobody on. Two out for Nick Kern. Kern, who's seen that average rise up to 273. He doubled in the game on Sunday. Extending the inning for Miles Williams, who went deep in later that inning. That was the fifth inning in San Rafael on Sunday afternoon. Here's the first pitch to Kern from Johnson. That is inside and low. Three runs against Johnson in the first inning. Two of them are earned. Here's his one out of Kern. Fouls it straight back. The snap of pitching staff, middle of the road as far as ERA and opponent batting average, third in the league. 4.75 ERA and opponents hit 264 against them. Johnson's 1 1 pitch. Kern waves at the slider and it's 1 and 2. Johnson looking for a 1-2-3 inning here in the second after giving him three runs in the first. His pitch to Kern. Checks his swing on a breaking ball in the dirt and they appeal. He does not go around, says Gary Frieders. Count moves to two balls and two strikes. Nobody on after the twin killing off the bat of Bronson Butcher. Two balls, two strikes, two out. And, of course, here in inning number two. Stoppers on the in the lead, 3-0 as Kern misses the breaking ball from Johnson for strike three. So two innings of work for Sean Johnson. Three strikeouts for him. He has a one, two, three second. And we go to the third. Last third of the order coming up for Napa when we come back. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Sean Jackson, Dominic Bethencourt, and Nico Tony for Napa bottom third of the order. Here in the top of the third inning, the Stompers lead at 3-0. 35 pitches for Henry Omania, a pair of walks and a strikeout. He's gotten some help from his defense in the first two innings on those two walks, specifically Bronson Butcher who threw out Jordan Garn trying to steal him then. Jackson takes strike one, and then Calvin Nunez stole second, tried to steal third in his defense, telling him to step off. He did. He fired to Kern, who then gave the ball to Barrios, who ran down Nunez and put the tag on him to end the inning. So here's the 0 1 pitch to Sean Jackson. He pops up the curveball, left side over toward the screen. Butcher a long run, and he will run out of room. No balls and two strikes on Sean Jackson, the center fielder, also. Throws a couple of innings for Tito Fuentes here and there. 
on the roster at the beginning of the year as a pitcher. Evolved into a utility guy who plays both ways. Here's Almanya's 0-2 pitch. Curveball high. One ball and two strikes. Jackson, Beth, and Court Tony here in the third. Omanya kicks on one and two. It's fouled out of play. Still a ball and two strikes. A lot of promotions coming up this week with the 4th of July on Thursday and then Pride Night on Saturday night. Here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. Here's Omanya's one-two pitch again. Jackson fouls it off to stay alive in and out of the glove of Bronson Butcher who could not squeeze it. Still a ball and two strikes. Jackson putting up a good fight, left-handed hitter. Omanya looks into Butcher, now they agree. He fires on one and two. So one and miss, strike three. Fastball in the outside corner, Jackson could not catch up. Second strike out of the game for Henry Omania. One gone here in the third. All right, here comes our wine whipper. This is Don Bethancourt. When he strikes out, all wine will be... Here's Dominic Bethancourt. Omania this year, two starts against Napa. He's 1-0. Combined nine innings of work. Just two earned runs, five hits. He struck out 14 and walked two in those nine innings against the Silverados. Here's his first pitch to Bethancourt. That's on the outside corner. No balls and a strike on Bethancourt, right-handed hitting, third baseman. Oh, mine is a one. Popped up, out of play. Oh, mine, you're way ahead, 0-2. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we play independent baseball, and uh, resources are slim. Foul balls, well, we're running kind of low on balls. If you... Uh, Bethancourt stands back in an 0-2 count against Henry Omania. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Called strike three on the outside corner. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Omania here in the third. Bethancourt strikes out. He's the second to go down looking tonight against Omania. It was a good changeup on the outside corner. And Henry only needed three pitches to retire Bethancourt. Here's the catcher, Nico Tony. First pitch from Henry is popped up. Shallow center. Gotta goes out, looking up into the hazy sky. He makes the catch. And one time through the order. Nine up, nine down. A pair of walks against Henry Omania. We go to the last of the third. Top of the lineup for the stoppers coming up. We would like to thank our community partners, Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice.
Top of the lineup for the Stompers here in the third. Nick Gatta will lead things off. He drew his league leading 27th walk his first time at the plate against Sean Johnson. Only two hits against Johnson in the first two winnings. One, the Dondre Hubbard home run, and that's the difference in the ball game right now. The three-run shot. Here's the first pitch to Nick Gatta. Takes down low, ball one. One zero in the air to left. Olch on the run toward the line. Long run. Right at the line, he jumps, and that is down. Olch could not make the catch. Though from here, it looked like he did. Tricky play running toward the line with the sun in his eyes. It was over his head, and down that'll be a base hit. The off man is on for the Stompers once again here in the third. That's all three innings they've gotten the leadoff man on. Here's Miles Williams looking to do better at the plate this at bat as he was down on strikes against Johnson the first time. The first pitch to him, a breaking ball in for strike one, and he had Miles Williams bailing. Same pitch that he went down on strikes on his first time, the curveball from Johnson. The count is 0-1. God is at first, a very short lead. The you know, one pitch. Pass ball. Williams does not pull the trigger. Start at the hands and take strike two. Williams now in danger of going down on strikes for the second time in as many at bats. Here's the 0-2 from Johnson. Curve ball swung on a miss. Strike three. Four strikeouts now for Johnson in the ball game. Here's Rob DeAngelis. Johnson in his one and only start against the Stompers this year is 0-1. He went five innings, allowed nine runs, seven earned, 12 hits. He struck out four and walked two. So he's already reached that strikeout total from the last time he faced the Stompers. DeAngelis at the plate with God at first and one out the pitch. He takes outside, one ball and no strikes. DeAngelis reached on an error by Johnson the first time who spun the throw to second base and threw it into center field. Johnson's 1-0 delivery. Outside, two balls and no strikes. Johnson at the chest on 2-0 to Rob DeAngelis. Here it is. He takes inside 3 and oh. Got at first with four stolen bases this year. Likely will not take off here. The 3-0 pitch is on the outside corner for strike one. A couple of inches off, but Michael Meyer Gives Johnson the benefit of the doubt. The tailing fastball. <laughs> Guys at first to 3-1. DeAngelis tops it down the third baseline. Foul. And the count is full. And DeAngelis frustrated with himself. He knew the pitch was ball four. It was low and away. Chased at it like it was a two-strike pitch to stay alive. And if it, there were two strikes on him, it would have been a good battle. But on a 3-1, he wants that pitch back. He'd take the walk. So the count is full with Dondre Hubbard on deck. Got us at first. One out in the third. Here's the pitch. And DeAngelis swings and misses. He gets away from Tony. DeAngelis is out, but got him will reach on a pass ball. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Sean Johnson. He now has five in the ball game, and here's Dondre Hubbard. Harvard did a three-run bomb his first time. All three runs in the game have come off the bat of Hubbard with the Stompers leading 3-0. Got it. second runs well. Johnson, the right-hander. The shadows covering the infield here at Belusa Park at Arnold Field, and Johnson steps off. 
Now Tito Fuentes Jr. will come out. Nobody's up in the Napa bullpen. Gives us an opportunity to remind you that tomorrow's ball game will come to you live on the Stompers Radio Network at stompersbaseball.com or on mixlr.com slash Genoma Stompers at 635 from Wilson Park in Vallejo. And then on Thursday, we're back here at home against the Salina Stockade on 4th of July and get your tickets. There'll be post-game fireworks and fans will be allowed to sit on the field for fireworks that night. And then on Friday, we're in San Rafael at 630 for just the second time this year. And then back home on Saturday night at 6.05 against the Salina Stockade for Pride Night. Mountain visit has concluded. Fuentes back in the dugout. Now Dondre Hubbard climbs in the right side. Got at second. Two out. Three nothing stompers in the third. Johnson's first pitch. Flips in a breaking ball to Hubbard for strike one. Hubbard now tied with Axel Johnson with the league lead in home runs at eight. It seems like every time Axel goes ahead by one, Hubbard ties him quickly. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Chase is a breaking ball for strike two. Hubbard looks to the sky for some answers on why he chased that breaking ball. Now finds himself in a big hole down 0 2. Breaking ball outside to Hubbard, and Johnson on the hill, very frustrated with the call. Thought he had strike three. One and two the count. Playing Hubbard to pull in the outfield and on the infield, so all the way around. Johnson looks to second, now fires on one and two. Another curveball, this one misses outside and low. Two and two on Hubbard, so he's worked it from 0-2 to 2-2. The pitch. Rolled softly, foul down the third baseline. So good battle from the power hitting Hubbard here. He's not usually one to just fight off good breaking balls and close pitches with two strikes. But doing that here. He's been working on the approach lately. Johnson's 2-2 pitch. Hubbard tanks low with a fastball and the count is full. So from 0-2 to 3-2. Hubbard has worked it full with Chris Quitzer waiting on deck. Trying to extend the lead here. Hubbard has driven, all, driven in all the runs in this game. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. So Johnson strikes out the side here in the third after giving up the leadoff single to Nick Gata. Nobody across were through three innings. It's the Stompers three, the Silverado's nothing. Top of the lineup for Napa when we return. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level.
Top of the lineup for Napa here in the top of the fourth inning. Omanya has gone nine up, nine down, but the unconventional way, the two-out walk to Gar in the first, who was caught stealing. The two-out walk to Nunez in the second, who was later picked off, trying to steal third. And then a one, two, three, third inning for Omanya. So he'll face Salas, who hits at 456. He flied to Hubbard in shallow center to open the ball game. And now Omanya on 45 pitches. Deals to Salas to open this fourth inning. A fastball swung on and missed for strike one. Omani has been great against Napa this year. Two runs in nine innings with 14 strikeouts. That's just against the Napa Silverados. And he faces them here again on Napa night. Here's the 0-1, and Salas takes inside. One ball and one strike. In San Rafael, they're underway in the bottom of the first. No score in that one down at Albert Park. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Omanya, and he throws it 57 feet. Needless to say, it skipped in, and Bronson Butcher just, yeah, it tried to get out of the way. Two and one the count on Salas. Omanya's 2-1 pitch. Salas ropes it to left center field. Back goes DeAngelis. He's on the run. He reaches up and makes the catch. There's Dakota Connors. Popped up to Chris Quitzer at first base in his first at bat against Omanya. Here's the first pitch from Henry. Chases a fastball on the outside corner and it's 0-1. Right on the outside black, but Connors looks like on the swing that it was six inches off the outside part of the plate. He's about right in the middle of the batter's box, so he awaits the 0-1 and swings to the fastball again. Omanya stays in the same spot. No balls and two strikes. Omanya's 0-2 pitch to Connors. Swung on and missed strike three. Fourth strike out of the ball game for Henry Omanya and he needs only three pitches to get Connors. Here's Jordan Gar, who is the first man to reach against Henry Omanya with a two out walk in the first. And Omanya trying not to repeat that here, his first pitch to Gar. It's a fastball swung on and missed. So Omanya has found the strike zone here in the fourth inning. Needed only the fastball against the top three hitters in the order so far. Three nothing stoppers in the fourth. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Good change up from Omanya, and it's nothing in two. Adgar way out in front. What will he go with here? He has the curveball in his back pocket. He hasn't thrown it this inning. Gar, who walked on four pitches his first time, in a hole 0 2. Here's the pitch, and that's off the inside. Omanya went with a fastball there. Tried to spot it on the inside corner and missed, so the count is 1 and 2. Gar, who's gone deep twice this year and has driven in 19. Hits with the bases empty and two out in the fourth against right-hander Omanya. Out of the windup, he fires on one and two. Swung on and missed. Two strikeouts in the inning for Henry Omanya. He has five total, and he is rolling here in the fourth. We go to the home half of the inning. Kuitzer will lead things off, followed by Barrios and Gillespie with the Stompers leading it 3 nothing. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice.
Chris Quitzer, 5-6-7 for the Stompers here in the bo bottom of the fourth inning. Sean Johnson with five strikeouts. He struck out the side in the third after allowing a leadoff single by Gata. Here's his first pitch to Quitzer. It's poured in for strike one. That was pitch number 52 out of the 6-4 right-hander. Second start against the Stompers. Here's the 0-1. Quitzer pulls it on the ground, first base side. Bissell fields. He'll trot over and step on the bag for out number one. Here's Barrios. Barrios grounded to third his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Three hits in the game, one in each inning. The big one, the three-run blast by Dondre Hubbard. Three runs on three hits for the Stompers. They have all the hits in the ball game. Here's the first pitch to Barrios. That's in for strike one. A good fastball knee high from Sean Johnson, and the count is 0-1. The 0-1 pitch from Johnson working quickly is a curveball for strike two on the outside corner. And Barrios, who looks down at home plate, the 17 inches across, he thought it was outside. 0-2 the count. Here's the pitch from Johnson. Another curveball, same spot, but a bit lower. One ball and two strikes. Johnson feeling good after striking out the side in the third. He Deals quickly here, another curveball that misses in the dirt. So Barrios from 0-2 to 2-2. And a lot of room out there in the outfield for him to work with. The 2-2 from Johnson. Fastball fouled straight back to the screen. Stompers pitching staff, by the way, uh, just dazzled in June. They lead the league in ERA, opponent batting average, whip, walks allowed, hits allowed, runs and earned runs allowed. All the important ones, stoppers on top. The 2-2 from Johnson again, breaking ball fouled away. Napa night at the ballpark tonight and the Napa Silverados find themselves trailing 3-0 to the stoppers at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. We're in the last of the fourth with nobody on and one out. Quitzer opened the inning with a ground ball to first. Here's the 2-2 to Barrios, another curveball in the dirt. And a couple of great curveballs from Sean Johnson here in the inning. Barrios just incredibly disciplined at the plate. Now the count is full with Brent Gillespie on deck. So for the third time tonight, a stopper works the count from 0-2 to 3-2 in the first four innings. Here's the payoff pitch from Johnson to Barrios. Outside and low, and he walked him. Only the second walk allowed by Johnson. The first was to lead off the game. Here's Gillespie, who singled his first time. A broken bat bleeder into center for a hit. He has a new piece of wood here in the second at bat, but he'll take it after the base hit his first time. You'll always trade a bat for a hit, though if it happens every time, it might become a bit of a bad habit. The first pitch is inside and low. 1-0 the count to Gillespie hitting over 300, a home run and five RBIs. Johnson's 1-0 pitch. Barrios with a huge secondary lead, and now Tony calls time, and Johnson steps off. Barrios showing like he may steal over at first. He has four stolen bases on the year. The speedy Venezuelan with a 1-0 pitch to Gillespie. He does not go, and it's a curveball at the knees for strike one. Good bender out of Sean Johnson. It started outside and just kept cutting back toward the middle part of the plate. It ended up knee-high right down the middle to Gillespie. Jackson in center toward the pole side. A spin and a throw over to first base is not in time. Whole field in shadow now. Sun still out. The 1-1 one -one to Gillespie from Johnson. There goes Barrios. The pitch is outside. The throw down to second is online, but not in time as it was in on one hop. Salas picked it out of the dirt. Could not slap the tag down on Barrios in time. 
So Barrios has his fifth stolen base of the year, and Brent Gillespie is in a 2-1 count with a runner in scoring position. Barrios got a decent jump. Tony put a good throw down to second base. It was online, just the one hop was enough to slow it down and give Barrios time to slide in safely. Runner at second, one out, and a 3-0 stomper lead in the fourth. Johnson looks to second now, is 2-1 to Gillespie. Breaking ball at the knees for strike two. So the curveball has looked and felt good for Johnson here in the fourth. So he comes back with it here to Gillespie, the 2-2. He doesn't. He goes fastball in the dirt. Gillespie takes, and the count is full. Second full count of the inning. Fourth, fifth full count of the game for Johnson here in the fourth inning. Butcher's on deck. Only one out with Barrios leading from second base in a 3-0 stomper lead in the last of the fourth. Here's the payoff. Outside with a curveball. And the stoppers have first and second with one out. A pair of walks in the inning back to back to Barrios and Gillespie. Butcher 0 for 1, a 6 4 3 double play his first time. Quitzer opened the inning with a ground out to first. Butcher, who's driven in five this year, does not have a home run. Stands in right side against Johnson with Barrio said second and Gillespie at first, the first pitch. Fastball outside and low for ball one. Butcher has three RBIs with runners in scoring position this year. Long look for Johnson now. Now he's set, looks back to second base. He throws on 1-0. and Butcher checks his swing, but it's called a strike anyway with a fastball in the inside corner. One ball and one strike to count. Johnson, after working quickly to open the inning, they're striking out the side in the third. He got the ground out, then the pair of walks, and he's really slowed things down out of the stretch here. He throws on one and oh, there goes Barrios. The pitch is high and in. The throw on the third is not in time. Barrios, who had a walking lead out at second base. And right when Johnson looked back to the plate, Barrios cap leading off. Bigger and bigger secondary leads, and he just took off. And with a right-hander at the plate, Tony had to throw around Butcher, and he was just not in time. So the Stompers have him at the corners. With just one out for Butcher. Johnson at the chest, his 2-1 pitch. High and in, and that went straight off of Gary Reichelmeyer and to the screen. That'll be ball three on Bronson Butcher. Gillespie takes second base on the wild pitch. And now the Stompers trainer is out looking at Gary Reichelmeyer and maybe Johnson and Tony got crossed up there with signs, but it looked like Tony was going down for a pitch down in the zone and Johnson threw a fastball that just stayed up. And the only reason you'd think that Tony wasn't able to get up there in time is he wasn't expecting a fastball maybe, but it doesn't really make any sense that he'd be crossed up because there was nobody on second base. Just went right past everybody and hit Gary Reinkelmeyer, the home plate umpire, squaring what looks like the shoulder. Took him straight to both knees. They're checking him out and he's grimacing. Gary Frieders is in there talking to his other Gary tonight. Bench coach Casey Gilroy and is out there for the Stomper staff with Dondre Hubbard, who brought Gary Reinkelmeyer a glass of water. Zach Pace has come down from third base, and now Tito Fuentes Jr. is out there, the Napa skipper, as Gary Reinkelmeyer is being checked on. It's a 3 nothing Stomper lead here in the fourth. And now they're checking the flexibility of that left arm of Gary Reichelmeyer. Gillespie took second on the pitch. 
Barrio stayed at 30, did not advance. It bounced pretty hard off the screen back to Tony. And just right off the left shoulder pad of Gary Reichelmeyer. Quitzer grounded to first to open the inning. Then Barrios walked, stole second. Gillespie walked. Barrios, during this at bat, stole third. And then the wild pitch, hitting Reichelmeyer and going back to the screen, allowed Brent Gillespie to get to second base. So two men in scoring position for the Stompers as Reichelmeyer looks like he's all right now. He'll take the glass of water from Dondre Hubbard. Michael Meyer still flexing that left shoulder over in San Rafael. The Pacifics have a 1-0 lead over the Salina Stockade in the bottom of the second inning. San Rafael coming off a loss in Sunday's game against the Stompers in which they just dominated them in almost every aspect of the ball game. Pitching, hitting, defense. The Stompers played their first errorless game on Sunday since June 5th. It's a 3-1 count to Bronson Butcher with one out and runners at second and third as we're about to resume action. Michael Meyer is all right, still flexing that left shoulder. Butcher looking to knock in a pair of runs here with just one out. Johnson works out of the stretch and he throws. He fouls the fastball straight back. Full count on Butcher. Two walks already in the inning issued by Johnson, both on full counts. Here's his payoff to Butcher with Kern on deck. On the ground to third. Nothing court fields. He'll look. Barrios back to the bag and fire across. Two out. Here's Nick Kern. Down on strikes his first time. The Stompers tonight, one for three with runners in scoring position. The Dondre Hubbard home run. The only time they were able to get anything going offensively against Napa. Johnson, who has looked good tonight, the three walks, but he does have six strikeouts. Three hits allowed in the first three and two thirds. Top of the lineup's on deck. Stompers looking to get there. Kern at the plate now, the first pitch. He takes a breaking ball for strike one. Barrios leads from third, Gillespie from second. Johnson on 0-1 to Kern. Another breaking ball, that one a bit low. Tony tried to pull it back up, but down below the knees of Kern for ball one. A ball and a strike the count. Two on, two out in the fourth. Stoppers lead 3-0. Johnson steps off, now retoes. Six four right hander set at the chest. Here's his one one to Kern. Swings through the fastball. It's one and two. Kern a little tardy on that fastball from Johnson. Now looking to just put something in play with two strikes. Kern who chugs up about an inch, inch and a half. Right handed hitter against the right handed Johnson. The one two. Popped up. Foul territory. Over towards the on-deck circle, Tony by the screen, and it is out of play. Count remains a ball and two strikes on Kern, who gets a second life. Good speed at third in Barrio. Something will have to get to the gap to probably score Gillespie from second. Sun peeking through the clouds now and lighting up about half the field, particularly right field with the infield in the shadows. Here's the one, two. Breaking ball swung on and missed, and that ends the inning. Seventh strikeout of the ball game for Sean Johnson. We're through four. It's the Stoppers three. The Silverados, nothing. Middle third of the order for Napa against Henry Omania when we come back. Stoppers Baseball is brought to you in part by 
Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We're in the fifth here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. Henry Omanya on 56 pitches, five strikeouts, two walks. The only base runners allowed against him. He'll face the middle third of the order. Bissell Olch Nunez here in the fifth. Three nothing stoppers lead. Henry Omanya deals a first pitch to Bissell. That's a fastball up high for ball one. Omanya now against the Silverados this year. 13 innings, including tonight. Just two runs against him and 19 strikeouts. His 1-0 is high again. In a groove in the fourth, got Salas to fly to left. Then a three-pitch strikeout to Connors and a four-pitch strikeout to Jordan Gardy to end the inning. Trying to get back in that groove here in the fifth, the 2-0. Down below the knees, three balls and no strikes, and now we'll have to get back in the count to lead off this fifth inning. They're straight away defensively, Kern well off the line at third base. Here's the 3-0. Inside and a leadoff walk to J.J. Bissell. Both walks that o Omani had allowed up until this point were with two out. Lead off walk to J.J. Bissell, and here's Nick Olch. Olch lying softly to Quitzer at first base his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Omani out of the stretch. Here's his first pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. No balls in a strike to Olch hitting from the left side. Bissell over at first. Omanya on a 1 1 after a long pause. The breaking ball stays high. One ball and one strike to the left handed hitting left fielder with the stompers on top. 3 0 in the fifth. Right hander deals on 1 and 1 to Olch. Fastball found back to the screen. DeAngelis and Hubbard in left and center. A few steps toward the pole side for Nick Olch. Williams in right has the sunglasses on with the glaring sun in his face. Omanyan one and two. 
Good change up, he pulled the string for strike three. Olch is down swinging for the first out here in the fifth. Melvin Nunez coming up with Bissell at first base and one out. Nunez batting from the left side. First pitch to him from Henry Omanya. Fastball in the outside corner for strike one. Omanya's on one pitch. Inside and it got Nunez, it looked like, maybe. No, it did not. It hit something. And we're thinking it's 0-2. It might have gotten the bat of Malvin Nunez. Omanya, who has faced 15 hitters so far, 12 first pitch strikes getting ahead. Something that Omanya has done really well today. Here's his 0-2 to Nunez. Fouled straight back. So whether it was a strike or not, there's now two strikes on Nunez for sure. Though we're led to believe that the pitch inside did get the bat of Nunez. It hit something. It didn't hit him. Omanya on 0-2. Way out in front. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Henry. Omanya, he now has seven. Two out here in the fifth. Had Nunez way out in front. Here's the center fielder, Sean Jackson, who was down on strikes his first time. He's 0 for 1. So after the leadoff walk, two punch outs for Omanya. We'll see if Bissell takes off at some point in this at bat as Jackson fouls the first pitch away. The count is nothing and one. For Bissell this year, three stolen bases for the big first baseman. So he's not afraid to run. Omanya deals on 0-1. Bissell bluffs the steal. Jackson rolls it on the ground to first. Quitzer is there. He'll step on the bag, so a we'll leadoff walk. Two punch outs, no runs, no hits. One left for Napa. We go to the last of the fifth, and we're halfway home tonight. Top of the lineup coming up for the Stompers right here on KSV Wine on the Stompers Radio Network. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma and social media support is provided by Word Mice. Top of the lineup for the Stompers here in the last of the fifth. Nick Gatta will lead things off against Sean Johnson on 78 pitches for Johnson. Three hits allowed, three walks allowed. Seven strikeouts for the right-hander. On the other side for Henry Omanya, he stranded the first base runner of the game in the top half of the inning after 
J.J. Bissell walk to lead off the inning. Zeroes across for Omanya here tonight, except for that left on base column as Gata takes a strike on the outside corner, and it's 0-1-1. Gata's one for one. He singled in the third, walked and scored in the first. Johnson's 80th pitch of the ball game is in for strike two on Nick Gata. Gata, who, after the walk, had reached in all 21 games that he's played. He got Sunday off. He has now hit safely in 16 of those 21. The 0-2. Inside. One ball and two strikes. Gata's walk in the first inning. He was down 0-2 against Johnson and then worked it full and worked the walk. We see that frequently out of the left-hander. And that's why he's in the leadoff spot in this lineup. Let alone he has a 526 on base percentage. Here's the one two. He hits it on the ground up the middle. Salas charges behind the second base bag, flips the first in time, one out. Here's Miles Williams. He's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Williams trying to flip things around offensively tonight. Stompers have three runs, the only three runs of the ball game, and they all came in the first with one swing of the bat, a Dondre Hubbard three-run blast. First pitch to Williams is called a strike, and it looked high and tight. And that's what Williams was thinking as well. No balls in a strike on the two-hole hitter. Here's the 0-1. He rolls it softly on the ground, the third, charging Bethencourt, barehand, the throw in time. What a play. By Dominic Bethencourt over at third. Williams, who doesn't run all that well, but still a heck of a play by Bethencourt to barehand it, get rid of it quickly. Here's Rob DeAngelis. He's 0 for 2, but he scored in the first inning after reaching on an error by Johnson on the hill. It's the only error in the ball game so far. It's been a pretty clean game halfway through. First pitch to DeAngelis on the outside corner, but a bit low. 1 0 the count. Hubbard's on deck. Johnson's 1 0 pitch. DeAngelis pops it up, straight back and out of play. One ball and one strike the count. We're in the last of the fifth with the Stompers leading 3-0. Over in San Rafael, they're in the top of the third with the Pacifics over the stockade 3-0 as well. The 1-1 pitch. DeAngelis rolls it foul over toward the Stomper dugout on the first base side. One and two the count on DeAngelis, who's 0 for two. He reached on an error in the first inning, so now he's reached in 18 straight. The one-two from Johnson. Swung on and missed. That ends the inning. The eighth strikeout of the ball game for Johnson through five innings. So we're through five full. It's the Stompers three, the Silverados nothing. Omanya back out to face the 8-9-1 spots of the Napier order when we come back. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. 
Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Eight nine one, Bethancourt, Tony, and then Salas here in the top of the sixth inning against Henry Omanya. He struck out seven, walked three. That's it against Henry Omanya here tonight. Seventy pitches for the right-hander. Pitch count looking all right for Omanya. All right, it's not great. His first pitch to Bethancourt to open the inning is swung on and missed. They're having fits with the fastball from Omanya tonight that's sitting at about 89 miles an hour. The 0 1 pitch from Omanya. High and in. 1 1. 87 89 with a fastball tonight from Omanya. He'll get it up to 92 93. Tonight he's fallen in and out of a groove. He was in a groove in the third and fourth and then lost it in the top of the fifth, walking Bissell to open the inning. Here's his 1-1 to Bethancourt, that's high. And he has Gary Reichelmeyer ducking behind the plate on every high fastball, and frankly, I don't blame him. Reichelmeyer, who was already drilled one time in the game. Unobstructed right to the left shoulder. It sounded like it hurt. Here's the 2-1 from Omani to Bethancourt. Out away, 2-2. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Bethancourt, who was 0 for 1, he was called out on strikes his first time up. We're in the sixth. Bethancourt leading off the inning with the Stompers leading at 3 0. Here's the pitch from Omania. Swung on and missed strike three. Strikeout number eight for Omania tonight. One out in the sixth. Bethancourt 0 for 2 with a pair of punch outs. Here's the catcher, Nico Tony. Tony's 0 for 1, he popped up to Gata at second base, two steps onto the outfield grass. Momanya's first pitch, misses for ball one. It was on the outer half, not even on the corner, but Reichelmeyer said it may have been a little low, I guess. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Tie and away. Two balls and no strikes. We're in the sixth, just the three walks against Omania. He has eight punch outs. Right handers 2 0. Tony pops it up, straight back and out of play. Two and one the count on the Napa catcher, the nine hitter. The leadoff man, Willie Salas, is on deck. He's hit the ball hard twice already. Salas, that is. Omanya deals on two and one to Tony. On the ground, foul down the third baseline, and the count is two and two. Tony digs back in in a two two count. Nobody on, one out in the six. Stoppers lead it three nothing. Here's Omanya's pitch in the dirt. And Butcher does a nice job to keep Gary Reichelmeyer as his friend behind the plate. Reichelmeyer comes out from behind the plate and looks down to Gary Frieders at first who says, what? <laughs> Reichelmeyer with his smile underneath the mask. So the count is full on Tony. The leadoff man's on deck. Omanya retos from the first base side. Right-handers payoff pitch. Out away. Uh, 
The count is full on Tony still. The 82nd pitch of the night for Momania is on the ground to second. Got us there. He'll scoop it up, throw to first, two out. Back to the top of the lineup for Willie Salas, who is arguably the most dangerous hitter in this Napa lineup. Comes in with a 456 average. And that leads the Pacific Association by almost 100 points. The next guy is Armindo Escobar for the Pacifics at 364. Omania's got him to fly out twice. Here's his first pitch of the third at bat. Fouls it away. No balls in one strike on Willie Salas. He flied to center to Dondre Hubbard his first time and then hit a laser to left center field that Rob DeAngelis ran down. Omania on 0-1. Salas swings through the fastball and the count is nothing in two. Eight strikeouts for Omani in the ball game already tonight, and we're in the sixth. He's way ahead of Salas here, 0-2, with nobody on and two out. The 6-4 right-hander downhill on 0-2. Swung on and missed strike three. Six innings, nine strikeouts, no hits for Henry Omani. We'll go to the home half of the inning. Middle third of the order coming up for the Stompers. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Dondre Hubbard will lead us off in the last of the sixth. Stompers lead it 3 nothing. All three runs for the Stompers have come off the bat of Dondre Hubbard. The three-run bomb in the first. Those are the only runs of the ball game. Four, five, six against Sean Johnson. Eight strikeouts, three walks for Johnson on 88 pitches. Here's the first one to Hubbard. He tops a breaking ball foul, and it's 0-1. Okay. Oh, Nobody up, surprisingly, in the Napa bullpen. With this pinch coming up from Sean Johnson, it'll be number 90 of the night. Here it is to Hubbard on 0-1. Breaking ball inside, one ball and one strike. In right field, Jordan Gar is well off the line over toward right center, about 120 feet off the line. Here's the 1-1, one, one, a breaking ball shot foul off to the right. One and two the count on the cleanup man, Hubbard. Hey, 
Silverado's bumper sticker. <laughs> one and two the count. Johnson, the tall right-hander, deals on one and two. Hubbard takes a curveball, a called strike three, a delayed strike three called by Gary Reichelmeyer for the ninth strikeout of the night for Sean Johnson. Here's Chris Quitzer. 0 oh, for 2, he was struck out and then he bounced to first. A little bit of a breeze blowing through tonight. Blowing across from right to left. Indicated by our flag in center field. So nobody on one out in the sixth. Johnson's first pitch to Quitzer. Outside, one ball and no strikes. The 1-0 pitch, a good curveball from Johnson in for strike one. Started it away from Chris Quitzer. It broke right back over the inner half of the plate. One and one the count. Here's the pitch working quickly. Quitzer breaks his bat a little flare to short right. Going back on it is Connor as he backpedals and makes the catch. Two out. Here's Pedro Barrios. Barrios is 0 for 1. He walked in the fourth and was stranded at third base. He has a pair of stolen bases tonight. He'll bat with nobody on and two out in the sixth. First pitch from Johnson. Down low with a fastball, one ball and no strikes. Johnson wants a new baseball after working so quickly. Tosses a new one into Tony. Want to know the count on Barrios, who, after the walk, reached in 14 of his 16 games with the Stompers here this year, and he takes a breaking ball for strike one. Barrios, who has been here for 16 of the 22 games. Tonight, game number 22, the 1-1 is on the outside corner with a fastball, one ball and two strikes. Nobody on, two out in the sixth. Stompers lead 3-0. Johnson shakes once, now twice. Now kicks on one and two. Barrios takes a curveball in the dirt, two balls and two strikes. Brent Gillespie's on deck. He's reached both times. Two balls, two strikes, two out, nobody on. Three nothing stompers in the last of the sixth. John Johnson, pitch count up over 90, here it is. Barrios fouls it away. Still nobody up in the Napa bullpen, so Johnson will likely work through this sixth. He's retired seven straight stompers. Here's this 2-2 two -two to Barrios. He did go around, make it eight straight on Johnson's ninth strikeout. Excuse me, his tenth strikeout. Bookend strikeouts here in the sixth inning. So we're through six. Three-nothing stoppers. Omania back out to face the two, three, four spots of the Napa lineup. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level.
Nine strikeouts, three walks for Omania. That's all in this game up to this point. Stranded, just one runner on base. The walk to Bissell in the fifth. The other two walks, one to Gar, one to Nunez, were both wiped off. Got stealing, and he picked them off. Here's his first pitch to Dakota Connors. Outside and low for ball one. Connors 0 for 2. He popped to Quitzer and struck out. Everybody in the Napa lineup had struck out tonight except for the catcher, Nico Tony. Omania's 1-0 delivery. Popped out of play, 1-1. One one. Henry Omania, who pitched at Cal State Fullerton and at Cal Poly Pomona in his third professional season, his first here. The 1-1 one -one to Connors. Topped over the mound, charging is Gata. Barrios will field, and that'll be an infield single. First hit allowed by Henry Omania in the ball game. The single over the mound to open the seventh. Six note hit innings for the right hander. And a brilliant pitching performance tonight. Now he'll face Gar with a runner at first and nobody out. Omanya did his best coming off the back of the mound, trying to get it. Gata came charging in, and really nothing you could do. It hit right in front of the home plate on the dirt. That goes down as a single. The first pitch to Jordan Gar is on the ground to third. Leaping Kern, he goes to second for one. Gata to first, a double play. That erases the leadoff single. So now nobody on, two out. Pinch hitter will be Josh Montalongo. Montalongo will hit for Bissell and he'll come in and play first base. So the infield single by Dakota Connors and the 5-4-3 double play. Montalongo hitting 205 with four home runs and 14 RBIs on the year. Will pinch hit for J.J. Bissell. He swings through the Omania fastball. No balls in a strike on Montalongo. Omania on 0-1. Swing and a miss. He pulled the string. It's nothing in two. Nine strikeouts for Omania up to this point through six and two-thirds. Right-hander on 0-2. It's outside, says Reichel Meyer. One ball and two strikes. <laughs> this could be the last hitter that Omanya faces if he's able to retire Montalongo. His 93rd pinch of the night is high. Two balls and two strikes. Nobody warming in either bullpen. Sean Johnson already at 101 pitches for Napa. Here's the 2-2 from Omania to Montalongo. Lined into right field, that's a base hit. Shortens up, pokes it the other way. Montalongo has a pinch hit single. Here comes Nick Olch. Olch, like many of the Napa hitters, 0 for 2. Omania out of the stretch. His first pitch is popped in the air. Down the left field line. Long run for Rob DeAngelis over into foul ground. He won't get there in time. Long strike for Henry Omania, and the count is 0 and 1. DeAngelis, who was playing toward the gap in left center field against Olch, the left-handed pull hitter. Flared it down the left field line, and Rob DeAngelis had a long run and just did not get there. It came up about 20 feet short. So nothing and won the count on Olch. He lined to Kutzer at first and struck out. Omanya gives a look to Montalongo at first base. Here's the 0-1 pitch. 
Swung on and fouled into the glove of Bronson Butcher for strike two. No balls, two strikes on Nick Olchomania trying to get out of this top of the seventh inning. Stoppers lead at 3-0. Here's the pitch. That's high. One ball and two strikes. Montalongo at first does not possess good speed. He'll take his lead. Quitzer holds him on. The one, two. Holtz checks his swing. He did not go on the ball in the dirt. It's two balls and two strikes. Hubbard now in center is over toward the left center field gap like Olch is going to go the other way. Omanya's 2-2 pitch. Inside, it almost got him. He's able to lunge out of the way, and the count is full. Malvin Nunez on deck. Olch at the plate. He's 0 for 2. Quitzer plays behind Montalongo at first, so he'll get a head start. Omania trying to go seven shutout here against Napa tonight. His payoff pitch. Outside ball four. Fourth walk issued by Omania tonight. Only the second time the Silverados have had a man at second base tonight. The last one was the man at the plate, Malvin Nunez, who was picked off trying to steal third. Now pitching coach Mike Nunez will come out. Ethan Gibbons has taken the jacket off and he's standing in the stomper bullpen and he'll go to the mound and start throwing lightly. Omanya came into this inning, six no hit innings, three walks, nine strikeouts. He gave up the leadoff infield single to Dakota Connors, a little dribbler back over the mound. Then he got the 5-4-3 double play, and then with two strikes, Josh Montalongo, the pinch hitter for J.J. Bissell, punched a base hit to right, and the full count walk to Nick Olt. So first and second, two out. Malvin Nunez will be the hitter. The mound visit is over as Gibbons starts throwing lightly in the bullpen. Devontae Glenn is up, and he's stretching in the Napa bullpen. Two on, two out in the seventh, and it's only a 3 nothing stomper lead. Now, after Omani has allowed two hits in the inning, through the first six, you're thinking he's untouchable. Now the stomp, the Silverados have the tie run at the plate. First pitch from Omani to Nunez. High and away, one ball and no strikes. Nunez walked and struck out 0 for 1. Omanian now taking a long time as he wants to have a conversation with Nick Gata at second base. And now he'll step off and Gata will go talk to him. I don't know if Omanian is worried about Josh Montalongo out at second. Montalongo this year, no stolen bases. And Napa doesn't want to run themselves out of an inning here. Their first man in scoring position since the second inning. Omania looks to second, now the 1-0 pitch. Nunez tanks low, two balls and no strikes. Willie Ethington now up in the stomper bullpen, no longer Ethan Gibbons. Two balls and no strikes on Nunez. There's the pitch from Omanya. Broken bat, dribbler to first. Quits her fields and steps on the bag, and it's never good when the barrel goes farther than the baseball. Omanya, no runs, two hits, two left here in the seventh. Stretch time at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. Last third of the order for the Stompers when we come back. We would like to thank our community partners, T. 
Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live in. Six no-hit innings. He allowed two hits in the top half of this inning and strands two men on base. So here's Gillespie. He's one for one a single. He's also walked in the game. Willie Ethington in the stomper bullpen. He may come on for the eighth. First pitch to Gillespie is swung on and missed. 102nd pitch of the night for Sean Johnson. It's 0-1. Oh 102 pitches for Henry Omanya tonight. Here's the 0-1. That's in the dirt. No balls in a strike on Brent Gillespie. It's a 3-0 game here. It's a 3-0 game in San Rafael with the Pacifics over the stockade in the top of the fifth. The 1-1 one, one pitch is high and away. 2-1 the count. <laughs> Bottom third of the order tonight. One for five. And a walk. Gillespie has the hit and the walk. Here's the 2-1. Curveball swung through. 2-2 two two the count. Gillespie to lead off this seventh inning. The 2-2 from Johnson, he yanks it well, found down the right field line, and that may clear the parking lot. He hit it 350 feet, and that's out where us who get here early park. Lights have come on here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. Gillespie stands back in, the 2-2 from Johnson. In the dirt, and Gillespie's worked it full. Three walks allowed by Sean Johnson. Ten strikeouts for the right-hander. And a right-hander's loosing in the Napa bullpen. Here's the payoff. Gillespie takes high, his second walk of the night. Lead-off walk for the Stompers here in the bottom of the seventh. And now here comes Tito Fuentes, Jr. Will Johnson face Butcher? Or will it be a new pitcher? We'll find out momentarily as Fuentes makes the quick walk out to the mound. He looks down to the bullpen. Now having a conversation with Johnson. And all he does is give him a fist bump and make his way back to the dugout. So Johnson will face Butcher. Lead off walk to Brent Gillespie. 108 pitches for Johnson trailing in the game 3 0. And Maybe Fuentes got a right-hander up too little too late. Ethington in the stomper bullpen. He will likely come on in the eighth. With 102 pitches. Here's the first pitch to Butcher. Oh, it got him between the numbers. It wasn't even close. First and second, nobody out after the hit by pitch. Boy, it got him right between the fours. 
Of course, Butcher who wears number 44. Now Fuentes will come out, and that will likely do it for Sean Johnson with the nine-hitter Nick Kern coming up. Fuentes at the mound dirt now. He'll take the baseball from Sean Johnson. This pitching change brought to you by Sonoma Hills Retirement. Right-hander coming on for Napa. We'll have that for you when we come back. New pitcher for Napa is going to be the six foot four right hander Devante Glenn on the season. This is the eighth game in which he's appeared. He has not allowed any runs. Earned runs, that is. One run against him, none earned on four hits in seven and a third's innings. Four strikeouts, two walks, and then zero ERA. He's faced the Stompers twice. Last on June 26th, where he went one inning, allowed a hit, got a strikeout. And then on June 6th, where he went an inning and got a strikeout. So no ERA for Devontae Glenn. He's the only Silverado that can say so. He'll face Kern, Gata, Williams. The Stompers have runners at first and second. Gillespie walked. Then Butcher took a hit by pitch right between the numbers. So Sean Johnson's out of the ball game. His line is not official yet. The book is not closed. Nick Kern will hit against Glenn. First man he'll face. Stoppers trying to add on to their 3 0 lead in the last of the seventh. Tonight, with runners in scoring position, the Stoppers won for four. Three RBIs with that home run by Dondre Hubbard. Here's Kearney's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Devontae Glenn, the right hander from Union, South Carolina, throws out of the stretch his first pitch. Lined into center field. That's a base hit. Here comes Romero around third. The throw to the plate is not in time. Nick Kern has an RBI single, and the Stompers extend the lead 4-0. So Rayson Romero, who came on to pinch run for Brent Gillespie, scores on the base hit, and he makes Zach Pace look really smart. Coming on in, scoring on the base hit. A hit that Gillespie, not a knock on him, but likely would not have scored on. So back to the top of the lineup for Nick Gata. 
He's reached two or three times tonight. He's one for two with a single. He walked and scored a run in the first. That run scored by Romero is charged to Sean Johnson, so still no ERA for Devontae Glenn. Nick Kern first pitch swinging. Lines a base hit up the middle. Here's Nick Gata. He's reached base in all 21 games he's played, and he's hit safely in 17. Excuse me, 15 of those 21. First pitch to him from Devontae Glenn. He squares around, bunts it down the third baseline. Bethencourt will field. The throw to first is in time. That's a sacrifice bunt for Nick Gata to move the runners over. Two men in scoring position for Miles Williams. Williams 0 for 3 tonight with a pair of strikeouts. Nico Tony will go out and talk to Devontae Glenn. On the season, Miles Williams 296, two home runs, 11 RBIs with runners in scoring position. He has a chance to extend the lead. Stompers lead it 4 0 here in the seventh. The three run bomb by Dondre Hubbard in the Nick Kern RBI single. Butcher at third, Kern at second, Williams at the dish. Miles has struck out twice tonight and bounced to third. The sack bunt moves everybody over. Devontae Glenn out of the stretch with second and third and one out. His first pitch to Williams. Breaking ball, swung through it for strike one. Nothing in one, the count on Williams. In a four-run ball game, right side of the infield is in. Only man that's not in is Salas over at short. Glenn's on one pitch. Another curve ball, and he misses. Nothing in two. Miles, who has struggled with the breaking ball mightily this year. Ethington in the bullpen. Williams digs back in. Glenn looks to second. Now throws on 0 and 2. Fastball misses outside. Not by much. One ball and two strikes. And wouldn't be surprised if Glenn goes back to the curveball here. Glenn sent at the belt. He delivers on 1 and 2. Curve ball popped straight back and out of play. That Nick Kern single to drive in Romero, the stopper's first hit since the third inning. Let's go. Enfield still in. The one two to Williams. Curve ball hit in the air, left field. Back goes old. She's at the track. He reaches up. He makes the catch, taking a home run away from Miles Williams. Butcher comes in to score. Kern goes to third on the sacrifice fly. 13th RBI of the season for Williams, and it's 5 0. But Nick Olchin left, went back to the track, the five foot wall. He reached over, took a home run away from Williams. But a run does score. Here's Rob DeAngelis. DeAngelis hitless in the ball game tonight. He reached in the first inning on a throwing error by the starter, Sean Johnson, and then later scored a run. Glenn works out of the windup now with a runner at third. His first pitch to DeAngelis is inside. One ball and no strikes to Rob DeAngelis, the hitter of the month in June this 2019 season, the 1 0. Inside that gets away from Tony. Here comes Kern. It comes from the backstop. No throw. Wild pitch scores a run. It's six nothing. <laughs> Two.
Two balls and no strikes on Rob DeAngelis. So the line now officially closed on Sean Johnson. He goes six innings, allows five runs, four earned on three hits. He strikes out 10 and walks four. So Kern, the runner that just scored, that'll be charged to Devontae Glenn. He now has an ERA. The 2-0 to DeAngelis. Popped up left side over toward the sidewall goes Bethencourt and it's out of play. Strike one on Rob DeAngelis and the Stompers have broken it open. Six nothing here in the seventh. Hadn't had a hit since the third and the only hit in the inning. The Nick Kern RBI single up the middle. Here's the two one. Inside look out. Three balls and a strike. So in the inning, the walk and the hit by pitch to Gillespie and Butcher. Then Johnson was yanked from the game. Kern, the RBI single off of Devontae Glenn. Then the sack bunt by God of the Williams sacrifice fly. The 3 1. DeAngelis fouls it back. The count is full. Kern, who got to third on the sacrifice fly, scored on a wild pitch from Devontae Glenn. The count is full with Dondre Hubbard on deck here in the seventh and a 6 nothing stomper lead. Ethington, who has been up and throwing pretty much this whole inning now, has stopped. He's ready. Devontae Glenn out of the windup. The payoff pitch to Rob DeAngelis. Lined back up the middle. Leaping is Salas. He can't get it. Rob DeAngelis has his single. And he's now hit safely in 17 of 20 games that he's played in this year. Great effort by Salas out at short. It was lined, but not very sharply. Salas had a play and just inches out of his reach. So here's Hubbard. One for three with the three run homer in the first. He'll get a chance to face Glenn. And now another Silverado has gone down to the bullpen, a right-hander. Hubbard digs in against Devontae Glenn. DeAngelis at first base. Long pause, the first pitch. Big swing from Hubbard, and he fouls it into the glove of Tony for strike one. Hubbard, no secret, he's trying to go deep for the second time tonight. He's tied with Axel Johnson for the league lead in eight home runs. He'd like to be the league leader once again. Besides the home run, he struck out twice. DeAngelis leads from first. On 0-1-1, Glenn kicks and fires. Yeah. Hubbard fouls it straight back, and it's nothing in two. Walk hit by pitch. Knock Johnson out of the game. Glenn gives up the RBI single to Kern. Sack bunt, sack fly. Scored Butcher. And the wild pitch allowed Kern to come in and score. Three runs on just one, two hits for the Stompers in this seventh inning. And now Glenn taking too long for Hubbard's liking. He'll call time. Sun almost gone. We probably have about 40 minutes until the sky is completely dark here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. But the lights are in full effect. DeAngelis leads from first with two out. Glenn's 0-2 pitch. DeAngelis goes. It's a ball off the outside corner. Wow. DeAngelis has a stolen base. His fifth stolen base of the year. Now Hubbard hits with a man in scoring position. I'll tell you what. It's a very good pitch by Glenn on the outside corner. It looked good. As far as across the 17 inches goes, height-wise a little bit more difficult to tell up here, but almost too close for Hubbard to take. DeAngelis swipes second. The count is one and two on Hubbard. And a six-nothing stopper lead in the seventh. 
Glenn peers in for what seems like an eternity now set. Looking to DeAngelis at second base, and Hubbard calls time. Hubbard not liking how long that Glenn is taking on the mound. Clearly. Still one and two. Glenn deals. Called strike three on the outside corner. Hubbard down looking to end the seventh. We'll go to the eighth. Stompers lead 6-0 on the sacrifice fly, the current RBI single, and the wild pitch. New pitcher, Willie Ethington. He'll face the bottom third of the order in the eighth. Stompers baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. New pitcher for the Stompers here in the top of the eighth. Right-hander Willie Ethington. Henry Omanya goes seven innings, no runs, two hits. Just a masterful performance from Henry Omanya. Now Ethington out of the stretch. His first pitch is inside to pinch hitter Jake Marshall. The count is 1-0. So Ethington this year, the right-hander who throws on 1-0. It's high and inside for ball two. He's 1-0. This will be the fifth game in which he's appeared. A 1.08 ERA and eight in the third. One run on five hits, five strikeouts, and two walks. His 2-0 pitch to Marshall is rolled foul up the third baseline. It's 2-1. The Jake Marshall pinch hits for Sean Jackson and Marshall, who's the second catcher on the roster. So we'll have to see where he goes out defensively in the top half, or the bottom half, that is. The 2-1 pitch popped up, first base side. Ethington long run over toward the stopper dugout, and it is out of play. Jackson ends the night 0 for 2 after being pinch hit for. Ethington, the 6'3 right-hander from Mesa, Arizona. Drafted by the Boston Red Sox in the 17th round of the 2012 MLB draft out of Mountain View High School in Arizona. The 2-2 is swung on and missed. A strikeout. The 10th strikeout for Stomper pitching tonight. One out in the eighth. Here's Dominic Bethencourt. Omanya, who went six no-hit innings. 
allowed the infield single to Connors to lead off the seventh, and then the Josh Montalongo pinch hit single. He stranded both base runners in the seventh, and on 102 pinches, his night is done, and he continues his dominance against Napa this year. First pitch to Bethancourt is punched into short right. Coming on is Williams. He won't get there. That falls for a one-out hit. So for Omanya against Napa only this year, 16 innings, two runs, seven hits, and 23 strikeouts. I think that's pretty good. Here's Nico Tony, the catcher. Bethancourt at first one out. Ethington out of the bullpen. Works out of the stretch. His first pitch to Tony. Breaking ball. In for strike one to 79 mile an hour curveball. No balls in a strike. We may see Ethan Gibbons in the ninth. Depending on what the lead stays at for the stompers. Here's the 0-1 fastball on the ground to third. Barfield who came in defensively. Fires to second. Got his throw to first. Is not in time. Tony reaches on the fielder's choice. Bethencourt forced out five to four for the second out and back to the top of the lineup for Willie Salas. Salas 0 for three tonight, something you won't see very often out of the man that leads the Pacific Association in batting average at 456. Tony's at first with two out here in the eighth. Ethington's first pitch. Breaking ball fouled away. Over in San Rafael, the Pacific's now nursing a 3-1 lead over Salina in the bottom of the sixth inning. Top of the eighth here, Ethington deals on 0-1. Salas swings through the fastball, 92. Oh, and two, the count on Salas, the leadoff man. <laughs> Luke Larita, the left-hander up in the stomper bullpen. Here's the 0-2 pitch. He punches it foul out toward the bullpen, and it is out of play. <laughs> no balls and two strikes on the leadoff man, Salas. Nethington, who's allowed just the one hit this inning, his first inning out of the pen. He fires on 0-2. Breaking ball popped up. Right side, Quitzer will run out of room. <laughs> Still 0-2 on Salas, the shortstop. The fans are loving it here tonight. Stoppers lead 6-0, top 8. Ethington, the right-hander from Mesa, Arizona, throws on 0-2, and, and Salas yanks it well foul, and out of play. Still nothing in two to Salas. This will be the sixth pitch of the at-bat coming up. It may be Larita in the ninth, depending on what the lead is at. Right now it's still at six with a man at first and two out. The 0-2 is fouled off again. Still 0-2 on Salas, who's 0 for 3. Barfield has come in defensively in place of Nick Kern. And Barfield, his spot will be due up fifth in the last of the eighth. Here's the 0-2 pitch again, and that's fouled off down the right field line. Quits are over toward the sidewall. It's out of play. Still no balls in two strikes after seven pitches to Willie Salas. The right-handed hitting shortstop. Dakota Connors on deck. Nico Tony at first base after the fielder's choice. Ethington's eighth pitch of the at-bat popped up. Over at first, Chris Quitzer calls for it right near the bag. He makes the catch. We're through seven and a half, stoppers six, Silverados, nothing.
Five, six, seven hitters coming up. Chris Quitzer will lead us off in the eighth. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Quitzer leads us off in the home half of the eighth. Five, six, seven. Chris Quitzer, who's 0 for 3. Devontae Glenn back out for his second inning of relief out of the Napa bullpen. Nobody up now for the Silverados. Luke Larita still tossing for the stoppers, and he'll have at least a six run lead. Glenn works out of the windup with nobody on base here to start the eighth inning. His first pitch to Quitzer is a breaking ball. First strike one. Stompers tonight, six runs on five hits. The 0 1 is inside to Quitzer. One ball and one strike to count. Left handed batter. Quitzer from Buffalo, New York. He's a product of. The University of Buffalo, same college as Khalil Mack. The only guy out of the University of Buffalo that I know besides Chris Quitzer. The 1-1 pitch from Glenn. Breaking ball in the outside corner for strike two. Some of you at home are going, Khalil Mack, Khalil Mack. And the others of you are going, where's the University of Buffalo? <laughs> Maybe in Buffalo. Not really sure. Is there more than one Buffalo? Here's a one, two. Two seamer comes back, but doesn't come all the way back. Two balls and two strikes. Others of you were naming other baseball players that have come out of the University of Buffalo that obviously are not ingrained in my mind. Here's the two, two. Curveball topped on the ground to short. Salas charges. He'll field bobble the throw to first. Still got him. Salas with the strong throw gets Quitzer to open the eighth. Here's Pedro Barrios with nobody on and one out. Lorita, the 23-year-old left-hander in the bullpen. Barrios, then Romero. First pitch to Pedro Barrios is high and away for ball one. Racing Romero's on deck. Remember, he pinched, ran for Gillespie in the seventh and scored on Nick Kern's single up the middle. 
Glenn out of the windup is 1-0. Barrios takes inside and low, 2-0. Stompers who had a 3-0 lead after the first inning and did not score again until the seventh when they put up three more runs. Glenn's 2-0 pitch. Barrios takes a breaking ball in the dirt. 3-0. Now a right-hander is up in the Napa bullpen. Three balls and no strikes with one out. Nobody on in the eighth. Glenn delivers. That's ball for strike one. Still a zero in the run column for Napa. On three hits as Barrios tops it on the ground softly to third. Bethancourt fields in fair territory. The long throw right on the money for out number two. Two great defensive plays for Napa to open the eighth. By Salas, the shortstop, who fielded, bobbled, and then still had enough on the throw to retire Quitzer at first. Then the nice running throw by Bethancourt over at third. Here's Rayson Romero. Romero this year hitting 120, but a 353 on base percentage. Remember, he pinch ran for Gillespie. So Gillespie's night is done. He went one for one with a pair of walks and scored a run in the seventh. His spot in the order scored a run in the seventh. Romero was the one that scored the run. First pitch to him from Glenn. Takes a fastball across the letters for strike one. Looks like the ninth inning will belong to Luke Larita. Glenn's on one pitch. Popped up. First base side. Montalongo calling for it, and he makes the play. So a 1-2-3 inning for Glenn here in the eighth. So we'll go to the ninth. Luke Larita on for the stoppers in a 6-0 lead. Stoppers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level.
Luke Larida, the left-hander for the Stompers. Six foot, 280 pounds out of Northridge, California. He's 2-0 this year with a 3.77 ERA. This will be the 10th game in which he's appeared and 14 and a third. He's allowed 13 runs, six earned on nine hits, 10 strikeouts and 21 walks. So Lorita with a big lead here in the ninth will face the two, three, four spots, Connors, Gar, Montalongo. Trying to get back on track. He's had some control issues this year. Fastball slider changeup. You'll see the slider a lot in the changeup, seldom from Lorita. The product of Cal State Dominguez Hills. Here's his first pitch to Dakota Connors on the outside corner. Strike one. No balls and a strike on Dakota Connors, who's one for three. He had the first hit of the ball game for Napa. The 0 1 pitch is high and away. An infield single over the mound in the seventh against Henry Omanya, who went seven shutout innings, allowed just two hits and struck out nine. Ethington through the eighth, allowed a hit, and struck a man out. Now Larita for the ninth on one and one. Dakota Connors flares it into right center field. Over is Hubbard to make the catch, one out. One out, here's the three-hole hitter, Jordan Gar, who's 0 for 2. Larita, the left-hander against the right-handed hitting Gar, is first pitch. Two seamer misses inside for ball one. D'Angelo Hubbard, Williams left, right in the outfield. It's Barfield at third. Barrios got a quitzer with Butcher behind the plate. The 1 0 pitch to Gar. It's in the dirt. 2 0 the count. Gar walked, caught stealing. Struck out and then bounced into a 5 4 3 double play. Larita out of the wind up on 2 0 to Gar. High ball three. <laughs> Larita falls behind guard three. Now he's averaging about a walk and a half per inning this year. The 3 0 is on the outside corner for strike one. Gar, who started the game in right field, has moved over to center when Jake Marshall came in. Here's the 3-1 pitch to him, and Larita throws a fastball by him. The count is full. Josh Montalongo's on deck. Three and two the count with nobody on. One out of the ninth. Stompers lead 6-0. Here's the payoff pitch from Luke Larita. Hit in the air, shallow right center, Gata goes out, Williams comes on, Gar spikes the bat, two out. <laughs> Josh Montalongo's the last chance. He has one of the three hits for Napa tonight. As we take a look at the game over in San Rafael, the Pacifics have a 3-1 lead over Salina, that game in the bottom of the seventh. Montalongo, the right-handed hitter, Larita's first pitch is hit in the air, left center, Hubbard moving over, he's going back at the track, he leaps and looks and it is gone. No. Yes. There was no signal initially and Hubbard, who played the ball off the carom of the press box in left center field, threw it back into second base and Montalongo 
went back and said, hold on a second, there was no definitive signal. So for the second game in a row, the Stompers take a shutout into the ninth and allow a solo home run. So that negates the shutout. Funny it was 6-0 in the game in San Rafael on Sunday afternoon as well when Corey Dempster hit a solo home run, though that one led off the inning. Larita delivers a fastball for a strike to Nick Olch. So deja vu, except we're here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. Larita left on left against Olch, against Olch the 0-1 fastball is high. No shutout anymore. One and one the count to Olch. Luke Larita trying to close the door in the ninth. Thiers is one one pitch. Olch fouls it away and Napa down to their final strike. We're on the road tomorrow. Next time we're back here in Sonoma. We'll be on Thursday for 4th of July. And there are very few tickets left. So go to stompersbaseball.com and get yours today. Larita's 1-2 pitch to Olch. The slider misses outside. Two and two the count. Nobody on, two out. 6-1 stoppers lead. Larita kicks and deals on two and two. Swung on and missed strike three. He goes to the slider. He strikes out Olch. That ends the ball game, and the stoppers have won five straight. Final score of tonight's ball game, six to one. Here's the final line score. Stoppers, six runs on five hits, no errors. They leave four on base. The second game in a row that the stoppers are errorless. For Napa, one run on four hits, one error they strand for. The win goes to Henry Omania. He is three and one. Sean Johnson gets the last. He is one and three, no save here tonight. Final time of tonight's ball game, two hours and 40 minutes. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is the quickest ball game that we have had this year by 15 minutes. So two hour and 40 minute game tonight. The Dondre Hubbard three run bomb in the first and the three run seventh for the Stompers propels them to the 6-1 win. The Stompers improve to 17 and five right now, five games ahead of San Rafael, but the Pacifics are leading the Salina Stockade. The Stompers are now 11 and two here at home. Napa has lost three straight. They're now nine and 14 and fall to eight and a half games back of the Stompers for first place. Next game will be tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow evening, that is, in Vallejo. A 6.35 start. Nick Barnice on the hill for the Stompers against the Vallejo Admirals at Wilson Park. We'll have that for you on the Stompers radio network at stompersbaseball.com or at mixlr.com slash Sonoma Stompers. We're back home the 4th of July. Fireworks on the field after the game, so get your tickets right now at stompersbaseball.com. They're going quickly. First pitch at 6.05. Then we're back home on Saturday, 6.05 for Pride Night, July 6th. That does it for us here. For everybody with the Stompers, I'm Forrest Hunt saying so long. Have a very pleasant good rest of your night. Stompers win 6-1. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency.
By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners, Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice.